Hi there everybody. So I thought I'd make a video on uh, optical mineralogy today. I think that uh, this is one of the trickier parts of any mineralogy class and that there's something to be gained from actually viewing the optical properties of macroscopic crystals, which is what we're going to try and do today in this video. The first thing we'll have to do is come up with a polariscope. This device will allow us to use both plane polarized and cross polarized light to investigate the optical properties of crystals. Plane polarized light is light that is only vibrating in one direction, whereas most of the light around us is vibrating in all directions simultaneously. Cross polarized light is when we take a polarizing light filter and put it perpendicular to the uh, vibrational direction of our plane polarized light. This should prevent any light from transferring through the second filter Unless, of course, minerals can do something interesting to light. Luckily, there's many sources of plane polarized light around all of us. Uh, anything with an LCD screen is also generating plane polarized light. So if you have a smartphone, tablet, or laptop computer, you also have a source of plane polarized light. Now there's one caveat to this, and that's if you've put a uh, protective cover on your uh, electronic device, it could potentially be interfering and in making the light no longer plain polarized. In my case, I have a tablet that doesn't have a cover on it, and I'll be using that as the base of my polariscope. So I have my tablet here, which is a source of plain polarized light, and I'm going to be using this uh, polarizing sheet as my upper polarizer, and so as I bring this uh, sheet in, you can see that right now it's transmitting light, but as I rotate it slowly, you'll see we eventually reach cross polarization in which all the light is blocked. I can then keep rotating the upper filter so that it goes back to an orientation where it transmits light. Now we have a polariscope. Hooray! So what can we do with this? Hmm. Well, with the polariscope, we can sort materials by their optical properties, and there's going to be two very large groups right off the bat. The first group is going to be what we call isotropic. The second is going to be anisotropic. Simple enough. Well, let's throw something isotropic onto the polariscope and see what happens. We'll first look at this crystal of fluorite in plain polarized light. So, Let's look at this crystal of fluorite in a couple of different orientations and while rotating it in plain polarized light. Now as we're going through this, I want you to notice any changes in color that you might see. And there's not really any. Yeah, okay, so it's pretty boring. Well, how about we throw the polarizer over it and look at it in cross-polarized light and see if anything else interesting happens. Well, it looks pretty dark, doesn't it? Yes, it's, it's very dark. And now, now I'll let, let me rotate it some and see if maybe it's less dark. No, no, still pretty dark. Okay, so also boring in cross-polarized light. The few sparkles of light you are seeing are caused by things like inclusions within the crystal and reflections off of crystal faces or inclusions, not really fundamental to the optical properties of the mineral as a whole. Note that so far under cross-polarization we've been looking at the crystal of fluorite while it's laying on one of its 1-1-1 faces. We could change the orientation to be looking down one of the A-axes of the crystal but I can assure you it will be just as boring. So by this point you may be asking yourself, why did you make this video? Why did you make a polariscope? Absolutely nothing's happening. But boring is good for us in this case because now you've learned the important facts about isotropic minerals. In both plain polarized light, not really much of anything happens, and in cross polarized light, not really much of anything happens. So let's switch over to something anisotropic, and uh, what I have for you next is a crystal of beryl. So let's rotate this crystal in plain polarized light and see if anything interesting happens. Right now, you should also note, we're looking down the A-axis of this crystal. So as we rotate this crystal, you can notice a change in the color, going from a darker blue to a lighter gray color. And as we continue to rotate the crystal, we go back to a darker blue color. 
And now we're back to a light gray. And uh, finally back to our original position with the darker blue color. So our polariscope has finally done something. Hooray! What we've just observed is the phenomenon known as pleochroism, which only occurs in anisotropic materials. Pleochroism essentially is color change in plain polarized light. But uh, some of the things you should be noticing are that the uh, pleochroic colors follow a very definite pattern where you start out at zero degrees with a dark blue color, at 90 degrees you're at a light gray color, at 180 degrees you're back to the dark blue color, at 270 degrees back to the light gray color, and finally end up at 360 degrees at the dark blue color again. This is all also related to the crystal symmetry elements that you're looking at here. The important take home for this video is that if you see pleochroism, you know the mineral has to be anisotropic. We'll go further into depth in a later video about pleochroism, but let's uh, switch over to looking at our mineral in cross-polarized light. So when I first bring this polarizer in, you may be concerned that this is looking an awful lot like the isotropic minerals did under cross-polarized light, but we're going to notice a distinct difference here in about half a second. So as the barrel rotates, we notice that light actually starts to be transmitted through uh, our upper polarizer. This is a characteristic of anisotropic materials, and it's one of the easiest ways to separate isotropic from anisotropic materials. So as we rotate the barrel in cross-polarized light, we'll notice a distinct pattern of when the mineral is transmitting light and when it is extinct. This pattern of extinction and transmission of light is particularly interesting given our previous pattern seen with the pleochroic colors of the mineral, as well as how this all relates to the elements of symmetry we can see in the crystal form. Under the cross-polarized light, we notice a distinct pattern where min the mineral is at maximum transmissivity at orientations that are at 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 225 degrees, and 315 degrees from the original orientation. Here's just a little demo of that to show you what I mean. At the crystallographic orientations previously where the pleochroic colors were either at their maximum or minimum, the crystal now is completely extinct in cross-polarized light. At 45 degrees, the pleochroic color is in between the two end members of pleochroism, and also under cross-polarized light, the mineral is at maximum transmissivity. At 90 degrees orientation, we see that the pleochroic color is at its minimum, but in the case of adding back the uh, polarizing light filter, we notice that the mineral is completely extinct. And so the pattern continues as we rotate around an entire 360 degrees in 45 degree increments. The important take home for uh, us for cross polarized light in anisotropic materials is that under certain orientations and rotations, the anisotropic minerals will actually allow light to transmit through the upper polarizer. Um, this is going to be very important and we'll talk about this more in depth at a later time, but now we know uh, two ways we can distinguish isotropic and anisotropic materials from one another. So in this video, we've made a polariscope, and we talked about how a polariscope works, and we've uh, figured out a way to use the optical properties of materials to break materials into two main categories, those which are isotropic and those which are anisotropic. Uh, and we also got a little bit of a hint that the optical properties of materials are going to be correlated with the symmetrical elements that we see within crystals. So I hope you join me again next time where we'll discuss in depth isotropic materials.